Last round, we had Storm from Caleb Share being defeated by uh, Will Pulliam's... No Bad Matchups Amulet. <sighs> no Bad Matchups Amulet. Is that what? Is that just the new deck name? And every Amulet player says the deck has no bad matchups. Well, then how they... come they don't win more tournaments? That's all I want to know. I mean, if because if, if it's pilot error, get good, noob. And if it's <laughs> not pilot error, then maybe your deck has some bad matchups, or at least a fail rate. So. Yes. Oh, that deck definitely has a fail rate. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it just putzes around. It doesn't do anything. I do like the addition of Adventurous Impulse. I think that one's really cool because, uh, you know, digging for a land or a creature uh, basically hits most of the things in your deck that aren't uh, the summoner's packs or the, the amulets, right? It hits yeah. basically everything else. And uh, when you're just digging for a land that uh, tasks for two mana or you're just digging for a primeval titan or something, like, it seems pretty good. Yeah, definitely. I think a better cantrip than Serum Visions, which is what you often saw in the deck sure. before. Uh, so uh, I'm a fan, even though I cited it out in that matchup, but uh, as a secondary cantrip, just any little added percentage points you can get when you're a linear deck that's just trying to assemble a bunch of different pieces is really valuable. Yeah. But switching it up here for round two, we have oh. two very interactive decks Ooh. with classic Jund, Bed and Modern Forever, just never, ever going to die. Well, I mean... J Jadine won't let it. <laughs> it's impossible. I mean, Jadine's so good, and her deck's so bad, but it just doesn't matter. Because she's so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I guess agree. I guess when you play against creature-based decks over and over again in your Jun deck, then yeah, you'll do fine. Yeah. If you go discard and discard into Liliana the Veil against the combo decks, you're, you're fine. Yeah, let's draw the right half of your deck, because yeah. that's how midrange works. Yeah. But this is a creature deck that you're playing against that has a lot of ways to get around removal or make removal awkward in Bant Spirits. So one... I can play a lot at instant speed between Spellcaller with Flash, Rattle Chains giving Spirits Flash, Aether Vial. So uh, it's harder for you to sequence your spells correctly because I can always play reactively. I have things like Mausoleum Wanderer that, that can counter, Rattle Chains giving Hexproof, Selfless Spirit, all of these, and then Drog Skull Captain. And sometimes if I just get two captains out, all your removal is really bad. Yeah. No, if you get two Droxwell cabins out, that's that's basically lights out. At that point, uh, if it's game one, I'm basically dead. And if it's game two, I need Anger of the Gods. So yep. that's about it. So the, there's just a lot of different ways to get around removal. Your red removal can sometimes not be able to kill the right thing because of the lords. There's something cool about your version, right? We got four copies of Reflector Mage. And zero copies of Why what? are you going through my deck? Because I'm curious. You're just... you're just. Well, okay, so... Oh, old ver <laughs> when I played against Cat Light, when she was playing Bant Spirits uh, earlier in the year, uh, at, uh, I believe it was SCG Atlanta, I was a team open, uh, she cast Reflector Mage multiple times against me, right? And I thought, oh, that was pretty good. And then I played Reflector Mage on my own because I'm playing humans, and I copied it a bunch with... Uh, <laughs> Phantasmal image and, and tempoed, tempoed her out pretty good. And from that moment on, I thought, well, I, I am the better Reflector Mage deck. You know, uh, and this matchup is, is, if it revolves around Reflector Mage, then uh, I'm going to be advantaged. Well, why are you shuffling your deck? Because you were looking at my cards. I looked at the bottom, like, ten cards or whatever, because yeah. I just wanted to talk about Reflector Mage. That way you know the top 50 cards. I know how you work, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Not giving you any edge. Hold on. Was greatness at any cost, Ross. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, anyway, so back back to the thing. So I, I never really liked Phantasmal Image in the, the newer iterations of this deck because uh, if you're not copying Drog Skull Captain, um, you don't really have a lot of, of Enter the Battlefield effects in, in your Spirits deck. And mostly, if you're copying uh, anything other than Drog Skull Captain, it just felt wonky. And like it doesn't work with Collected Company, which is super awkward. Like You have to copy something that's already on the battlefield. You can't copy something that you also find off the collector company um and so i always found myself just wanting to cut them but if you have reflector mages in your deck over path to exile that gives you sweeter collected companies that can do more stuff and it makes your uh phantasmal images significantly better so xan syed moving away from path and toward reflector mage really caught my attention and it's one of the reasons why we're playing it today yeah reflector mage still uh also just quite good against jund you're you have the single uh, significant threats that you're trying to sneak a uh, create a window early to sneak them onto the battlefield and then back them up with a ton of disruption mm -hmm. and use them to pre either bury me in card advantage if it's Dark Confidant or pressure my life total if it's Scavenging User or Tarmogoyf. So Reflector Mage makes that plan less smooth by just interrupting the chain of uh, you either drawing cards or attacking me and giving myself more time to uh, recover from your disruption, draw more threats, and sort of overload mm -hmm. what's going on on the disruptive side of things. 
let you draw some dead discard spells later in the game. I don't think they're ever going to be dead dead. Your deck plays a lot of uh, like kind of clunky stuff. Like you you don't have a ton of cheap creatures, right? You have like you know uh, half half of your creature suite costs like one, two, or three, and then you also have collected company, and then well, I guess it's all of your creatures costs one, two, and three. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm saying is your deck's a little slow. Discard spells are going to be pretty good, especially after sideboard. I think. Okay. Well, we'll see. Okay. Whatever. I'm just going to jund you. Out or even. Jundine. 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 No, I lost round one. I get to go first. That's the rules <laughs> that Brad Nelson came up with. And he is yeah. the king of versus live. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> it's not true. I'm the king. <laughs> That's also not so, true. <laughs> while you're working on that, uh, shout out to uh, Adam Mills in the chat for the sub. Ooh, thanks, Adam. Who has then gifted a sub to our good friend Tan and Grace. Aw. Who has gone mad with power with uh, the uh, sub, <laughs> the, the sub icons, nice. the, the sub emotes. Alrighty. Uh, well, let's, uh, my hand here is pretty good. We are pr- kind of like one land too heavy. If any of these lands were like a discard spell, we'd be much happier. But this hand's fine. My hand was four lands and three three drops. So, Oof. Or three lands and four oh. three drops. Nice. Speaking so, of Tannen. Speaking of Tannen. Uh, Tannen. Had a pun for oh, Ross. No. This will be good. <laughs> when Ross dressed up for Halloween, is he Ross Scarium? <laughs> My costume was not particularly scary, so it wasn't even pun. that timely. Oh no, no! That was... I made a four-year-old pop culture reference for my <laughs> Halloween costume, and he was mad when I didn't get it. I'll say I, was I got it. Okay, I saw the picture. I got it. You were Shia LaBeouf with a bag over my head. Nice. Said, I'm not famous anymore. I was better in my costume, which was <laughs> a plate that said Hulk Hogan on it. <laughs> Basically, anyone, anyone who didn't bring a costume, including me, because I was, I don't know, lazy or whatever, uh, you got a plate wrapped around your, your neck that uh, just had a random person on it you know sorry tannin the tannin grace no Ugh. that w- that needs to die <laughs> this hand is definitely a keep a solid early curve um and i think i bottom this because if i overload on that part of my curve even though i have more powerful cards i could get clunked up if todd has a good early disruptive start i do not have an early disruptive start luckily for you and let's uh Get just a basic forest and play to wire. All right, best turn. I'm we're, a 19. We're gonna play a Bobbert and hope that we don't get turn two reflector maged. Oh, makes me wish I'd kept the reflector mage on top, but eh. and. Thinking about what I'm going to do on this next turn. I might change based on your draw. That is true. Got some options. That didn't really change anything. I don't really want to run this into removal, but it's my most mana efficient play. Like I'm basically running any creature I play right here into removal. So I think I just need to be mana efficient and hope to find some cheaper cards so I can start double spelling and get ahead. So let's play Droxel Captain. Alrighty. This Dark Confident is going to bury me. Would you like to trade? Nope. 18. Wow, but you said it was going to bury you. Alright. Liliana Minus. I'm doing this mostly because either I take one of his better cards and or I strangle his mana. If he sacks this, he can, but he has to attack the Lily, so he's still short of mana next turn. And I don't really mind this dying, considering my hand. I'm just trying to one for one him to death since Dark Confidant is on the battlefield. Uh, actually, I should probably just do this because I'm gonna end up so taking an 16. extra point off that canopy. I drew a Reflector Mage, so let's bounce this thing. Okay, you can go. All right, minus. Go. Come on, second captain. Yeah, that's not good for me if he finds it, but. Oops. 
I will play a Supreme Phantom and attack the Liliana. Okay. Fast turn. Ross channeling all these spirits. He's Ross Medium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one was good. Shout out to humanity <laughs> for that one. Way to go, humanity. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to play two Dark Confidants and say go. Uh, on your end stuff, I'll play Rattle Chains. Yeah. I'm at 15. All right. I'm going to go 19 and fetch wrist taps. Just want to start getting some beatdowns on. Yep. Uh, Three, four, five. So this is four, six, nine. nine. Yeah. Yep. I'm at 9 or 10. Yeah, maybe I should have held up uh, Assassin's Trophy instead of playing one of these Dark Confidants, huh? Because now I might just lose. I guess and I should have expected Rattle Chains. That's the turn. All right. Uh, 8, 7. I'm at 11. I will... Play a scavenging ooze. There are two creatures here, but you'd have to crack the wooded foothills. Do you play that foothills? Is that in play right now? Yes. Okay. Um, so you can effectively only gain one life here, uh, and that will bring you to eight, and this is still uh, nine. Mm -hmm. You have four in hand. I know push Goy for two of them. Um, if you have a second removal spell, it would have it would. Hmm. I'm gonna let that resolve. I don't think it does a whole right, lot. Go. Uh, so what's this right now? This is one second. Yeah, are you gonna upkeep some stuff? Yep. I'm going to And I'm going to Fatal Push the Drug Spell Captain. Spell Call the Fatal Push. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a point to cast that. So if I draw um, Mausoleum Wanderer, I can cast it. Okay. Uh, so you go to 15. I'm at 6. Uh, that resolves. Uh, still on your upkeep. I'm at, I go to 10. You attack me from 15 to 11. Okay. All right, I will Assassin's Trophy the spell caller. That's not a thing you can do. Okay. Rats. That's... Am I just So I guess I just have to target this. Uh yeah, yeah this it's not lethal because it can't attack. Okay. So and then I'm just going to eat one of these and gain life. I'm done. So I'm back up to 7. You're at 10. If he draws a uh, another Supreme Phantom, I die. Yeah. Only have the one other basic. Uh, so you're at seven, and I'm at yeah. ten. Mm -hmm. And this has a counter on it? Yes, thanks. You can also just hit me for, what, four, put me to three, and then Dark Confidant threatens to kill me. So I might have to, like, activate Scavenging News on upkeep multiple times. And this is summoning six, so I'm, I don't yeah. have to worry about this attacking. We're also technically threatening lethal next turn, I think. One, two. No, I have to get one more creature into the graveyard. But... Drop. Mm -hmm. I'm dead. Attack you for four. I'm at three. I am going to go to eight to shock and then reflector mage the use. That is um, unfortunate. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Assassin's Trophy. Yeah, that's dude, I I I almost said a curse word. I hate Assassin's Trophy. <laughs> It is just not a good card. Yeah. So at that point, look at, I had two lands because of the trophy. I had Reflector Mage in hand. If I had drawn any one or two mana play, it was good, or any land. A lot of... All right. Two. Nice discard spell. Yep. Nice Inquisition. And I'm dead. No. Great. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Spirits. Assassin's Trophy. <sighs> uh, Meg 222 with the sub. Storm Thanks. count three. Nice. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, let's take higher than any storm count you made playing storm last match. No, I stormed for four. <laughs> I grape charged you for four. Yeah. <laughs> you also emptied for fourteen. All right. Uh, let's take a few questions from chat. Also, if you have any, uh, you know, more pun names, I guess that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Well, first let's let's get you happy again from uh, Krishkin uh, two. Roll Tide. Roll Tide, dude. This weekend, <laughs> I'm a huge Alabama fan. Uh, of course, I mean you can see my, my shirt. <laughs> um, I am from Alabama, and this weekend uh, we are playing against number three LSU. We are ranked number one, and it's going to be an insane game. And I'm very happy to be watching it. So roll tide, and also roll tide, also roll tide. <laughs> Todd is getting rolled. <sighs> so I'm sad again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a couple of puns because we had them over for last time from Histeus. Uh When Todd has his friends over to play Minecraft. Is he Todd Landerson? No. No. <laughs> also, we don't play Minecraft at my house, sir. Uh, okay. Any... It's only Quake. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> no, only Halo 1 on original Xbox. <laughs> hooking them all together with uh, oh, God, uh, yes. phone line cords. <laughs> <laughs> when I used to play that, the only thing that I would actually play is just like me and one other person, and we would joust with the Warthogs. <laughs> Nice. All right. Uh, any more questions or can we move to sideboard? You can move to sideboard. All right. If you have any questions for me or Ross about modern, about Alabama football, about, you know, Halloween party last night. I don't know. Sure. Any any questions you may have, tag at SCG Tour and Twitch chat and Dan May is going to pick his favorites and ask them to us. We are going to take a quick break while we prepare our sideboards for game two of JD Complarence's John Jundak versus Zan Syed's Bant Spirits. All right, we're back here for sideboarding for game two of JD Complarence's Jun deck versus Ansiad's Bant Spirits. Uh, since I lost game one, I'll start. Uh, we're going to be bringing in a little more removal, uh, Anger of the Gods and Fatal Push. Uh, these are basically just we want to maximize interaction. Um, you know, some of our cards in game one aren't exactly great. Dark Confidant, obviously, pretty good. Uh, in some spots because it's not dying. But the way that the Bant Spirits that kind of turns on a dime and starts attacking me uh, means that Dark Confidant is pretty often a liability. And now that our overall mana curve is a bit higher thanks to Blood Braille from the deck, it's just uh, a little too much uh, damage for us to handle, I think, in uh, after sideboard especially. Uh, we're going to be cutting the Nile Spell Bomb. This is a main deck for dredge considerations as well as just being generically good in a lot of matchups, but this is not the matchup for that. And then we're trimming the discard a little bit, and I I don't like dealing with myself damage, so we're going to be cutting the Thoughtseize over the Inquisition, even though Thoughtseize can hit collect a company. Uh, we're going to bring in one Graft Digger's Cage as a means to basically just stop exactly collect a company, since that is one of his best cards in the matchup. Uh, two copies of Anger of the Gods that can clean up a bunch of the smaller creatures. Also cleans up two copies of Drogs Hall Captain, uh, so very important out in that scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, one copy of Fatal Push. Uh, to go along with the once main deck. Uh, two Kitchen Finks just to give us a little bit of a life buffer. These also are pretty good at blocking Reflector Mage, which is uh, going to be quite annoying, but it also allows us to actually turn the corner and start applying pressure back to Ross. Obviously, this is a bit of a non-bow, so I'm not happy about that. But I think normally we're going to be casting Anger before we cast Kitchen Finks. This is also I mean, a non-bow. Yeah, not, another non-bow. I get it. I, I get it. Look, this is not my deck, Okay. <laughs> You know, <laughs> sometimes the cards are good enough that it doesn't matter that they don't work perfectly together. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that's how I'm going to be boarding. And let's take it over to you. Okay. Uh, on my side, it may seem strange to be cutting Aether Vial because it's generally a key cog in decks that it appears in. But unlike humans, the spirits that can operate pretty effectively without it. Mm -hmm. And if that is the case, Aether Vial becomes a liability in any matchup where the games are likely to go long and it's not helping you get around counter magic. So, which is specifically matchups like this. It also falls prey to Culligan's Command pretty easily, which uh, isn't good. So basically Aether Vial is only good in this matchup if you have it on turn one um, and is a huge liability when you draw it late just by being air in your deck. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be cutting these vials, be a little bit more dense in terms of just good quality cards in my deck to play through Todd's uh, bevy of removal spells. Bringing in a couple Path to Exiles to help answer Todd's creatures in addition to our Reflector Mages. And then Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, is an excellent card, not only against Todd's plan of just casting removal spells over and over again, and our plan of getting under that with uh, various ways to counter removal spells or give our creatures hexproof, uh, just tempo Todd out. Thalia is very good in that game plan, but also just matches up really well against some of the creatures in his deck, namely Bloodbird Elf, right. uh, by killing it in combat and 
when you tap out for a Bloodbird Elf, if there's a Thallium play and you hit a non-creature spell, you just can't cast it. Right. So it makes it, they have to wait till a five mana to cast a Bloodbird Elf. Then they can't hit like a, then they have like, uh, so they, they can't turn the corner as quickly as a result. Also stops Kitchen Fink. So Thalia is just an excellent card in these Jund matchups. Yeah, I mean, any any deck that has, uh, you know, more non-creature spells than creature spells, I think Thalia is just going to be coming in because it's just generically good. And honestly, for me, that's one of the reasons why I prefer humans over Bant Spirits, just because uh, it is a better Thalia Garden of Thraven deck. And I think Thalia Garden of Thraven is just insanely powerful. Yeah. One of the ten best creatures of all. All right, <laughs> let's field some questions from Twitch chat while we are sure. shuffling up for game two. Um, from Snow Jiggles, uh, what does it going to take for Merfolk to be relevant again? Uh, a Silver Gill Adept with a different name. Banning of a hundred <laughs> different cards. <laughs> I, I agree with you there, Ross. Wow, <laughs> just firing all cylinders. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm s sorry, Snow Jiggles. <laughs> it seems tempting, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I Silvergill Adept is the best card in Merfolk by a lot. Um, you know, before humans existed, Merfolk was kind of the deck that functioned in that space. But I, I just think that uh, if you're going to play an Ether Vile deck, either Bant Spirits or Five Color Humans is just a better choice. Um, they are more disruptive, more powerful. Yeah, faster clock, more disruptive. And they're just a better Aether Vile deck most of the time. Yeah. Uh, or you can play allies to spite everybody. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> we have five lands in our opener. I do not like it. I do yeah. not like it. But I think I need. I should keep it? Just because we uh, we are a little bit more expensive after game one with our, with our uh, average casting costs. And one of our lands is a Raging Ravine. I'm actually going to lead off with not Raging Ravine. Uh, I'm just gonna play Black Leaf Cliffs and say go. My hand's pretty good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to go 17. to seventeen. And I'll kill it. I'm gonna fetch a blue green land. Breeding pool. That's the name. Ooh, it's right and there. And this is, this is why we played the Black Leaf Cliffs over the ravine because we wanted to bolt into Tarmogoyf this turn. Uh, we're just gonna fetch a basic. We we'll play a Tarmogoyf and go to nineteen. This is currently a uh, three four land instance and a creature. That's pretty good. Tarma die. Just get over here. So you're at nineteen up seventeen. Robert, this look good over here like this? Uh you push that speed. Would you prefer it on the bottom over here? No, that's fine. Okay. I'm gonna go to fifteen and play Noble Hierarch Mausoleum Water. Nice. That's the turn. Triple one drop start. Get an aggro. All right. Feet down. 12. Unfortunately, I've dealt myself a fair amount of damage here. But. Oof. Go. So there's one really solid plan from Jun sometimes is just to go beat down. You know? That's actually um. super annoying, Ross Merriam. <laughs> <laughs> he can... Take the creature out the graveyard if I don't draw a removal spell. Nice. Attack you for two. Yeah, I'm at 17. 17. Pass the turn. All right. Just well. very unlucky. Didn't have anything to play. Wow. Just really wish I could draw spells. All right. We're going to swing for six. Let him cast his collective company. If you want to just activate Noble or uh, Moreland Hot to get rid of Noble Hierarch, we're fine with that too. Yeah, I can't really take this attack and just go to six and be in bolt range. I guess Todd's already played a bolt. So maybe I can. I don't know. There's usually only three bolts in these Jund decks now, right? Sure. I mean, you also have Mausoleum Wanderer, so... Yeah, I'll go to six. Okay, I'm going to try to... Uh... Well, if I play Kitchen Finks, he's going to collect the company. If he hits Spell Queller, we're in a lot of trouble. If I do nothing, he's just going to choose a better creature, like another Lord or something. Uh, so I think I just have to cast this. Yep. Now we'll Coco in response. Yep. And we want him to Coco during attacks. Uh, though, if he hit, like, two like two Reflector Mages or whatever, that would have been kind of gross. Okay. Well, did not hit the uh, Spell Queller, but we did hit a couple Lords. All right. But no Queller, so that was all. You All right. go to 19. Uh, 19. Your turn. 
So, could have just main phased that Coco and gotten in four extra damage, but... Yeah, that's one thing I also am not a huge fan of in the Spirits deck is Mausoleum Wonder is like pretty powerful, but it rewards you for like main phasing your stuff. But when you have Collect Company and Spellcaller in your deck, uh, you are not really incentivized to main phase anything. Um, If you have a Coco here, I would main phase it to try to hit a uh, Phantasmal Image or another yeah, Captain. I don't. I'm just uh, trying to figure out how I'm sequencing this. I'll go to five. Sure. And I don't think I want to get islands, so I'll just get forest. And at this point, Ross has to know that I don't have a removal spell. Or even if I do, he's not really afraid of it right at this juncture because he has Mausoleum, Mausoleum Wanderer. Where is my forest? There it is. So I have, right now I have to plan out how to optimize my attacks while, without dying and like... I'm I'm at five, so any two creatures are lethal, and Todd has the ability to activate Ravine next turn with a land drop. It's not true. If you activate your oh, uh, yeah. Moreland Haunt, you can let these two hit you and go to one. That is true. And I am planning on activating Moreland Haunt this turn. Okay. So. Uh, play Selfless Spirit. Ooh, that's gross. That triggers the Wanderer. Mm-hmm. Wanderer is actually a three three. The Wanderer with the with this can become a four four. Oh it's, no, it's currently a one two three four. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's a it's, four four. So it can be a five five right now, and then yeah. attack for six. With I'm, the I'm talking about four four blocker. Like, oh, which sure. of these creatures do I want to attack with? And it's the captain that I don't want to have get in combat. In combat, you can't kill any of these directly. So I think it's the captain I attack with. I don't think it makes sense to attack with two creatures. I guess I could. I could attack with these two. This is for three and four, so that would be seven. And I could make it eight by making the spirit now. That'll bring Todd to eleven, leave me with three three blockers. Mm -hmm. So even if you activate Ravine, I won't die. Um, oh, and you're fetching, so I'm bring, bring you to eighteen. So this will be. So I said this was three, and this is could be five. So that would bring you to ten. And then next turn, I, ha I think I have more than that. Yeah, I think I want to attack with two and try to kill in two, two turns. So I'll do that. And before damage, I'll make this spirit so that I deal an extra point. And you didn't, I think, you didn't give me any spirit tokens, Rob. I'm not uh, up on that. You're slacking, Director Rob. Okay. Look, you got okay. spirit. Japanese spoil. All right, I'm at 10. Yeah. I'm at 10, you're at 5. That's a 1-1 a one, one flying spirit token. You can go. We'll get that fixed. In the moment. <sighs> Am I just dead? So yeah. if I attack with everything... I guess there's a chance you have to block this to death. Oh no, you just put Spirit on this and block? But if you do that, if you Spirit before damage, you have to block both of these. But if I tap out and attack, am I dead? Alright. What happens if I attack with this? Yeah, this is currently a 2-3. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. All right, so if, <laughs> Only if, have one. if these three attacks, he just doesn't block the one Goyf, right? And he goes block, 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 sacrifice. Takes three down to two, and then I'm dead. Two to the uh, back, I believe. So this would be three, six, eight, eleven. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we can't do that. I think we just have to attack with these three, and... So I still don't want to... I don't want to just die to a lightning bolt here. Currently, the spirit is a 3-3, three, three, and phantom is a 2-4, and selfless spirit is a 4-3. So I can just block like this and little and eat all three of Todd's creatures. That's embarrassing. So Wait, this eats it? It's a 4-3. That's a 2-3. Oh, okay. Why well, lose? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you just, I, have no, you just have I, no removal. I, I, I had nothing. Yeah. yeah. I needed removal, and I yeah. just drew a bunch of creatures. So you, you literally don't have an attack that does anything. Cool. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good point. Although, if I had Anger of the Gods there... Uh, oh, no, your Muslim Wounders are 3-3, three, three, so you can actually just pop it off and <laughs> yeah. counter it. So. <laughs> this is a good okay. wreck. Just, <laughs> I was just beating on all fronts, on all sides. <laughs> Stupid Moreland Haunt. Just... 
I don't know. Uh, I guess that's maybe an argument to keep Dark Confidant in because if I had had one of those going early, uh, I could have maybe just drawn into more removal. If, if you had anger, though, you forced me to sack the Wanderer, and then your gross are three fours, and then my blocks are a lot worse. No, nah, well, you can still do the thing where you just go block, block, sack Selfless Spirit, and then you still lose no, none of your creatures. Well, uh, I lose the Selfless Spirit. Well, you can also just and, sack and, the Selfless Spirit. You don't even have to sack the Mosley more. But then you're, again, your, your things are still three fours. Sure, but. And I lose a blocker. So I would. You still die. I guess you died a lightning bolt in that spot. Well, I'd still oh, have to no, wander. Oh, no. If you can't pop it. Mm, okay. Oh, I don't it, know. The anger. If I pop Selfless Spirit, the anger would would deal with your Finx. That's true. But That's then true. your Graves would be four fives because you'd have sorcery too. <sighs> Great. But I'd have two indestructible blockers. Yeah. The Selfless Spirit would just deal with anger. And then yeah. I'd just block, block. Doesn't they bounce matter. off each other. I lose. It's okay. I can't win. Nothing I do matters. Let's get <laughs> some questions from Twitch chat. Because <laughs> uh, I. Ooh, this is bad. Does, does Twitch chat want to see a pity game? I guess we we got like twenty minutes as far as uh, we can handle some questions we just, while we shuffle. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's play a pity game. That's fine. Yeah, pity game. See if I can. I'm gonna I'm gonna sideboard differently, but go keep keep asking questions. Sure. Uh, from Jerexify, could is burn viable or is it just like one of those fringe decks now? No, I think burn is fine. Uh, it was actively quite good about a month ago. Um, just the way the the metagame shaped up. I think Seder Fire Dancer is really good in the sideboard. Um, the issue right now with it is that it, Burn used to be slightly favored against Dredge, and Creeping Chill is just obviously unbelievable in that matchup. So it's gone from slightly favored towards the Burn side to significantly unfavored uh, for Burn, and that's an issue. But if people are hating out Dredge... Like your your Eidolons are generally pretty good against spell based combo decks, things like and things like Infect. So if Eidolon usually if Eidolon is in a good place in the metagame, Burn is, mm -hmm. and Dredge should force the metagame towards a place where Eidolon is good. All right. So uh, from Weep for Humanity, uh, is there a modern deck that is both very competitive and fun to play? I mean, wow, I've, rude. I find Dredge fun. Yeah, I dude, think just think, because you don't like decks doesn't mean that they're not fun. <laughs> fun, fun is a very subjective term, so it just depends yeah. on what you like to play. But I promise you, no matter how you like to play Magic, there is a viable modern deck that plays Magic in that way. I agree with that. There, there may be times where it is not particularly good in a hostile metagame, but that doesn't mean that you know a month from that point that it won't be one of the best five decks or whatever. Like, yeah, things fluctuate so rapidly. So what I'm gleaming from all of this is uh, play Mill. <laughs> yeah, Mill's tight. Dude, I, I think Mill beat Emma last week in, in like round three in the undefeated, and they went pretty high in day one. I don't know if they made day two, but... I believe they did make day two. Yeah, day two with yeah. a Mill deck. So I'll tell you one thing. Crypt Incursion is really good against Dredge. That's true. That is very true. It's not Has a that ever happened to you? Or... Might have. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, sad Ross. All right, pity game. Let's see if I can get one. My hand is really gross and stupid and bad. I'll keep it. Sand <laughs> is not great, but I don't like mulliganing in matchups like this, so let's do it. All right, start with an inky. Well, you got my rattle chains. I got nice. four lands of two companies left over. <laughs> Your turn. Bess. All right, I will... Uh... No, play land crafter's cage. <laughs> play Tarmogoy. Your turn. Sure. How big? That's a 2-3 right now. Currently. Good thing I didn't play this fetch land. Man, I'm smart. I will play a selfless spirit. Okay. That's the turn. No thoughts easy. I've got a phantasmal image. I take the phantasmal image. I'm going to play graph digger's cage. Hit you for this many. Uh, For three. Or no, I'm still two. Fetch four damage. This one's not going so well for me. Wow, it's like I, I drew the things that do the, <laughs> do the stuff. <laughs> Get a tapped uh, black red. Your turn. Uh, I didn't make blue mana either, so I can't Moreland Haunt this turn. Nice. Uh oh. <laughs> I, can, I can reflect your match, though. Oh, that's a nice one. I'll take three to 14. Bounce your goy. Yeah, I'm still going to lose very easily. <laughs> Moreland Haunt plus. Uh, let's get Creatures in the Breeding grave. Pool because we already have two white mana. Selfless Spirit keeps Anger from doing anything. Do you just not have anything? No, my hand is uh, Goyf Thought Seize uh, Land. So okay, yeah. so you're uh, at so eighteen or no, so you're fifteen. At... Fetch once, Thought Seize once, and oh, Selfless Spirit. Okay. 
Sweet. I haven't been marking down anything. So we've got 15 to 14. You draw another Tarmogoyf? I did. Uh, that's the face of a man who drew another Tarmogoyf. I did draw another Tarmogoyf. Your turn, Mr. Miriam. <laughs> Your turn. I could thought these, but I just don't feel like taking the damage to take a collector company out of his hand. You would make your goyfs next turn slightly bigger. Does that matter? It might, because I'm about to remove all the creatures. Mm. Attack you for four. Yep. Yeah, 11. 11. That's the turn. Tarmogoyf. Yep. Tarmogoyf. Yep. Go. Make a spirit token. Yep. And now I have to deal with these flyers, which I can't, really. So that's cool. Moreland Hod's very good against Jund. It's huh. very good against decks that have a bunch of spot removal. I'm at 14. Okay, I guess your things will get to be big, because I want to play Dark Square Captain and attack you for five. Nice. I'm at six. And that's the turn. How you say Dobbs? Huh. Shoot. Discard? Because I can't target cells here because it has hex proof. So you can sack this to keep this alive. And I think I would rather have Captain than Selfless Spirit. Would I? Yeah, especially because sacking this gives me just easy blocks on this turn. So, yeah, I'm going to sack and then I guess... I, sh I should attack first because now this has Indestructible. I, I, yeah, I gotta you attack should 100% first. attack first. Yeah. Okay. I can't so attack with both, so I'm going to attack with this. Then before to... damage, I'm going to deal two, shoot, or make you discard. Okay. So the K command is going to put an instant in the graveyard anyway, so I might as well discard. But yeah, let's keep the captain around. So I take four. Yep. I go to ten. All right. Great. Your turn. My deck sucks. Man, I keep saying that, you know? That was a good draw. What's happening? What's hap I'm just getting mushed. I'm at two. Uh, Wait, no, you're just, you're, you're just dead. Oh. Path, you're on top. Go ahead for attack for six. Great. Thanks. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> you, you, you can search your library for a basic. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so today today I learned Reflector Mage is very good in the Band Spirits deck. Who would have thought? Reflector Mage and Collected Company. Has any uh, anyone realized that that's a combo? Hey, funny story. You drew two Collected Companies. <laughs> you beat me anyway, even though you cast neither. <laughs> <sighs> Moreland Hawk. I do not like losing. Powerful. I just want to card. throw that out there. I'm sorry if I'm PJ Salt right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like losing, like ever well, in well, anything. Uh, I think I'm I'm kind of like um, like uh, prosciutto. I think prosciutto right oh, now. Oh yeah, I, that was one of the things. Pr pr prosciutto de Parma. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Let's take some questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was one of the things. Uh, Borderland Ranger. Ooh, Borderland. I need to play that when I get home. Uh, why haven't we uh, changed the name of Bant Spirits to Spooky Taxes? Because <laughs> actually, th th Death and Taxes spells. is actually more apt for this deck than than uh, yeah. Because this should just be Death and Taxes. And there's two th there's two Thalias on the sideboard. That's the only tax effect. No, nah, Mausoleum Wonder. Oh, yeah. there's Wonder. You're right. Yeah, and they're spooky all Spooky Taxes. <laughs> yeah, they're all dead. So, but it's it's. It should be like Spooky Company or something. Or that. Next. Just a whole lot of Spooky. <laughs> Next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I, Ro look, roll we're, tie? We're, we're <laughs> <laughs> Anything that I can do to make you happy, sir. Uh, okay. Um, from Elric Kane. How do you guys go perfecting uh, mana bases for this? What? Like with... Uh, the Jun deck in particular uh, it has um, that filter land. So Twilight Mire. Twilight so, Mire. I'll, I'll I'll say this. Uh, I have never been a math guy when it comes to mana bases. Um, I usually start with trying to match uh, in accordance with uh, the colored symbols with the lands. And then over time, based on uh, how the the deck feels, like am I are too many lands entering the battlefield tapped? Um, you know, there is such thing as a mana base being too good. You know, and and you you start sacrificing uh, like your life total when you could just be playing more basic lands to just uh, you know not have that problem. Yeah. Um, too many lands start entering the battlefield tapped. 
Um, and, and, and you have to find that right balance. And I think the, the best way to do that is just to play games with it. Uh, Jaden clearly thought that, uh, being able to play like the, the swamps and the twilight mire, as well as, uh, I believe there's a second force in here too. Uh, but with the twilight mire being able to either produce double black for Liliana the veil or double green for scavenging ooze, um, you know, it, it kind of fits, uh, in the right spot. And if you're not super hard on red with things like lightning bolt, you can afford to play like a twilight mire or an Urborg tomb of Yawgmoth or something, which a lot of the older versions of Jun did. Yeah. You can do things like that. I think a lot of it is intuition. Now, I'm not it. I'm despite my math background, I'm not sitting around just like running a bunch, crunching a bunch of numbers, plugging things in. I use some of those things as a baseline, the way the Frank Carson article gets passed around. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, those numbers I have in my head are approximations of them. And that's the baseline that I operate from. But I think there's a lot of subtleties to building mana bases that gets lost um, beyond things just like I have this many colored sources because that's what the total number of mana symbols in my deck dictates. You need to really think and envision in your head how your curve works in mm -hmm. terms of the, what spells you're playing on which turn and then try to build your mana base towards that curve. Yep. So you see Twilight Mire in a deck like this because they have four copies of Liliana of the Veil but they also need to filter it to a ton of green mana to utilize Scavenging Ooze or cast Kitchen Finks in the post sideboard games. Yep. So the single copy makes a lot of sense because of the cards that you're playing. If you look at a deck like Bant Spirits the, the one drops are blue and green. So there's no uh, so there's no surprise there's that... There's no Razor ticket. You want yeah, to play Botanical Sanctum. Sanctum. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you also look at the way your gold cards operate. So the, the Spirits deck has a lot of Azorius colored cards because that's generally where the Spirits are. So you want to stay away from Azorius lands because then you can get stuck uh, sometimes not being able to cast them. Or at least not being able to cast two spells in the same turn, yeah. which is really when the deck starts to, to flow. You know, if you hit... That, that was one thing I was going to bring up is that you also have to... You can't just look at uh, your spells on like a one-to-one -one ratio with your mana base. You need to figure out uh, how to build your mana base in such a way where when the pinnacle turn comes to, to turn the corner of a game you can play two or even sometimes three spells of a variety of colors or of the same color, and you need to make sure your, your mana base reflects that ability to do exactly that. Yeah, double spell. like a, If you're commonly double spelling with certain cards, then you can almost consider them like a double colored card together and then include that in the, in the way you push your mana base. Mm -hmm. So again, you'll, you can take the numbers that people generate from hypergeometric distribution and things like that and use that as a baseline and then you have to just use the intuition that you build over time, look at your deck and have an understanding of how the deck plays out and adjust from that baseline accordingly. And, and it's not a hard science. It, it, it's not an exact science in no. any way. You just you keep doing it and you get better over time. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I'll, I'll be playing like uh, my is deck or whatever in standard. Right. And. You know, there, it's not like some some uh, uh, formula where I'm like, I really just should play two is at guild gates. You know, it's more like, a well, I don't do anything on turn one. Um, sometimes I can't cast Crackling Drake on four, but I also need to make sure that I, I can like still cast Opt a reasonable amount of time. But also I need to make sure I have X number of red sources. And even though there's like a downside to playing is at guild gate in my deck, you know, it doesn't hurt that bad. And it kind of fixes both problems at once. And that's kind of what you have to do sometimes. I mean, you have to, like, eyeball it. You have to kind of get a feel for your deck. And then you make the changes based on how your games have been playing out and playtesting. Yeah, you play enough games and the the Crackling Drake situation comes up more often than you expected. Uh, and you think that's emblematic as opposed to just an aberration from your small sample size. And, yeah, you cut down on an Is It Guild, guild Gate. But the, those sorts of things, you're never going... Like, no one's ever going to sit down across from you and say my mana base is 100% optimized. There are too many variables to take into account to have it optimized in an abstract sense. It's always going to be everyone sort of fudging it, and you just hope it, it comes together. Yeah. But I promise you, you'll get better over time. I just want to say thanks to Elric Kane for that question. It was a very yeah. good question. Uh, let's hit one more, and then we're going to take a short break. I have to say that was a very, very insightful answer. But in that same vein, you have totally uh, disillusioned my uh, thought process for this, Ross, because I was clearly imagining you with a white uh, <laughs> with a white lab coat, mixing beakers, trying to find the perfect formula, and then you finally the, you reach the it. Math thing with the beads, the abacus. Abacus. Yeah, I, you have an well, abacus. Just, <laughs> just mixing beakers, then 
you reach the perfect formula and you just burst <laughs> out your window going, Eureka! Yeah. And your neighbors go, Ross, it's three in the morning. Please go to bed. Well, his neighbors are pretty regularly telling him that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's do one more question and then we're going to take a short break. All right. Um, for Ross, uh, from Nick Yeager, uh, wants to play Dredge. Good man. Uh, what are bad matchups for Dredge? So any matchup where you can reasonably lose a game where they don't have any piece of graveyard hate is going to be a tougher matchup because your game one advantage shrinks considerably. Mm. Those tend to be big mana decks, uh, like the Primeval Titan decks, which we saw do well last weekend, and Tron. Although I think your Tron matchup has gotten significantly better. Okay. Actually, like all of those matchups got significantly better because of Creeping Chill. Yeah, you're so, just a little bit faster than you yeah. used to be. Because they, they give you three turns or so to set up while they're setting up. Mm -hmm. So if you can kill them in that time or make it so that them casting the Titan or casting the Karn or whatever doesn't really uh, doesn't do enough and you kill them before they get to the Ugin or the Scape Shift, uh, things like that, then you're in good shape. Amulet is rough because they have the main deck Bog. Yep. So when they cast Titan on turn three or four, you can't really finish them off with a Conflagrate. They usually find like, some way to stabilize the, the, the battlefield enough and then sort of kill you the next turn because your deck doesn't block very well. I think Storm is a rough matchup because they're just a little bit faster than you. Yep. But again, it, like a, it, they're not that much faster than you. They ki they kill on turn three more often, but you're both pretty much turn four decks. So I honestly think that matchup favors whoever wins the coin, whoever wins the die roll. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it, the two decks I'd be most scared of are Amulet because it can go over the top of you and as a main deck piece of hate and, um, and Infect. Sure. Because they can very easily just beat you without any sort of hate. That yeah. You, Aaron Barrett's list has like a relic and a cage on the sideboard. Like they do Stuck. not need to draw. Yeah, those cards it, it does not matter. Like they're, you know, if they just go uh, turn one noble, turn two blighted agent with mana up, you're dead. You know, yep. like ninety percent of the time you're dead the next turn, which is pretty great. Uh, I I agree. I think that uh, a lot of decks like Dredge that uh, give the the fair decks trouble. You know, especially in game one. Um, you know, they are going to just be a little bit of an underdog to any deck that can. Uh, be really explosive in the first game and isn't what uh isn't playing what I like to call fair magic. You know, if if they're if they're uh, ramping and, and trying to play a, a giant spell on like turn three or four, or if they're just trying to not interact with the opponent at all, those are going to be the matchups I think where Dredge is a little bit behind because you don't have Gogar Grave Troll anymore, so your deck can't just kill somebody on like turn three. You know, you, you can kill. Turn you can three. just not consistently. Yeah, it's hard. All right. Well, uh, we're going to take a short break while we prepare for the third match, which I believe is Escape Shift, Shift against a blue white control. Azorius yeah, we got control, Azorius sorry. control uh, uh, com and uh, facing off against the uh, the Titan Shift, the Escape Shift decks that play Primeval Titan that have been cropping up lately. Uh, it's going to be a pretty sweet match. And, and Ross again is on the side with uh, the Primeval Titans. Yes. So we'll see if Ross can clean sweep me today. I really hope not. I've been uh, I've been really missing Lost Merriam, and it, I don't really have a pun for Win Merriam. You know, <laughs> Win Moriam. I I think you know? that I think that's where we got to Boss Miriam. Boss Miriam. Love playing. it. Cool. All right, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 